Hey everyone, how's it going? Just got back from the range. Wanted to give you a quick range report and initial impressions on the Glock 20 Gen 4 10 mil that I'm calling the Crockett Special. Kind of done up in a roll and special type uh, fashion here. Uh, there's a couple more videos of this on YouTube. So if you want any more information or are looking for any more information on this as far as like a benchtop parts review and stuff like that, check out those videos. So I'll put links to everything below if I can. Uh, if I can't, just check out our Facebook and most of the stuff. Honestly, I, I can't put links to below given the YouTube policy. So. Anyway, while this stuff is fresh in my brain, try and keep this quick without talking too fast. I uh, don't want to lose you guys. But I um, wanted to give you guys some impressions on how it shot, um, any issues or things I did or did not run into, because uh, there were kind of some uh, concerns from individuals by putting the comp on, by putting the RMR on, uh, by shooting different weighted loads, uh, how it's going to actually function, if there were going to be issues or not, because this is, I don't know, you don't see these a whole lot, you know, uh, you see them more done on the Glock 19s. And stuff like that so anyway wanted to share that information so first and foremost uh shot perfectly beautifully i probably shot i would say close to 200 rounds maybe not quite 200 rounds um most of the ammunition i was shooting was i got a box in here so i don't forget what it is lax ammo 180 grain uh copper plated it's like an fmj round so this stuff right here shot just fine no issues at all uh, as did all the ammo that i shot this way the other, uh, I did shoot a full mag of my Hornady uh, 185 grain. This is a, or sorry, 180 grain. This is an XTP. So these are both 180s. And uh, it has an XTP bullet in here. Roll it in here real quick. This is what I'm using for deer season in Iowa uh, for this, this weekend here because we cannot use hard cast or FMJ ammo. We're required by law to utilize F or uh, hollow point ammunition. So you get in more note later if you guys have any questions. But, Shot beautifully, no issues, around 200 rounds, Most, mostly the, the FMJ stuff, but did I, I also did shoot the hollow point and it shot flawlessly. I don't know where it was ejecting. It's kind of hard to tell because I was at an indoor range, which I don't go to very often. A little um, you guys know that. Uh, and I was right up against a wall on the right-hand side. So my brass that was ejecting was you know, going pretty much everywhere because it was coming off and hitting stuff and just going wherever. So function-wise, it was awesome. Not a real concern with this ammo anyway. When we get up to the 200 plus grain, We'll keep an eye on it and I'll probably try and shoot it outside and keep a closer eye uh, on the ejection. So my main goal going to the indoor range and actually paying to shoot, which is something I don't do very often, was to zero the RMR. Again, this is an RM06 Type 2 with a 3.25 MOA dot. Got it zeroed. Uh, no issues there. Shot awesome. Zeroed it at about 10 yards. Um, and we were hitting everything about as far out as far as we could push the target. So I do need to shoot it a bit more to get a little more comfortable with it. Um, I kind of washed my hand already, so I had a big old blood streak on there. Um, I am getting a little bit of rubbing uh, on the top of the slide. You can see some blood from there, just from there. So I get up a little too high, um, which isn't a, isn't a, a, a bad thing, I guess. And I'm getting a little bit of a back up here, so you can see a little, little bit of rubbing on the slide. No issues there. Uh, kind of common on stuff like this, especially when you start enhancing those slide separations and stuff like that. So. Not a concern, but something to keep in mind if you are worried about something like that. You guys have probably already noticed that right now the Glock does not have the compensator on it. This is the KKM four port comp. So in KKM's install video, they don't show utilizing any type of locking compound. Um, kind of made me raise an eyebrow when I saw that because I was like, you probably need to actually use some locking compound to keep this on there. Um, my goal was to go and test it with the comp and without the comp. So I installed it, got it trued and straight and everything and just torqued it down. Didn't use any locking compound because I knew I was going to pull it off. Um, by probably magazine five, and I was checking it after about every mag, magazine five or six maybe, it had already gotten loose and I just took it off and pulled it off. So uh, with the compensator is how I shot it first. And my first few rounds, I was kind of shocked and, a little, and pleasantly surprised. It had far less felt recoil and muzzle rise than I was expecting it to. It was uh, very pleasant to shoot. It was a bit concussive because we were indoors and again, right next to the wall. So I think that obviously factored in, but uh, very pleasant to shoot. Wasn't really hard recoiling. In fact, I would say that how it shot without the compensator is how I going in thought it was going to shoot with the compensator. So there is a difference in shooting it with the comp and without the comp. So it came off, I pulled it off, shot it again. And the recoil is much more snappy without the comp. It's uh, you get more muzzle rise without the comp. Um, and it's hard to say on the, the felt recoil or like, I, I feel like with the comp, it's more of a push, which is really nice. It's more of a push, easier to stay on target, less muzzle rise, but with the comp or without the comp, uh, 
it is uh, more snappy and the muzzle comes up more. So definitely a noticeable difference. Um, I'm glad I went with the compensator and I'm definitely gonna keep and continue using it because um, I think with the higher pressure 10 mils, um, I'm not sure if you're gonna notice a bigger effect or greater advantage to something like this, but um, I definitely can tell the difference easily from shooting them back to back. I'll continue rolling video in here. I was wearing that GoPro on the top of one of my hats for this range session indoors. But one thing that surprised me from the day and one of my several takeaways was that um, without the compensator, there is far more flash or perceived flash from the shooter's position than there is with the compensator on. Now I know that sounds weird uh, and to me, it surprised me when I pulled the comp off and shot it, I was seeing much more flash, much, much more flash. And it really surprised me. So using the video, I went through and did some stills uh, and took some screen, some, some screenshots there uh, and saved those. So I'll roll those in here now. But uh, as you can tell, there's a big difference in the perceived flash from the shooter's position uh, from comp to no comp. Uh, and I think what we have there is, uh, all these picks by the way, are with the, um, the FMJ ammo from LAX. So maybe it's a bit flashier ammo than some, I don't really know. Um, but I think just the raw barrel is just creating that kind of uh, omnidirectional flash and it goes up and around and everywhere. Whereas with the comp, um, I think the gas is given a bit more time to expand obviously. So that may have uh, come into play a bit, but also we have you know two ports on the top and then we have a port on each side. So it's a, it's a four port comp. Uh, so I think not only is it allowing the gas to expand a bit more, but it's also putting some of that gas to the sides instead of up top. Uh, so all around there's less flash with the comp from the shooter's position and it does not obscure, in my, how I recall, I don't recall the flash obscuring the target at all, but with, with the raw barrel, 100%, there's like a big flash and it definitely takes away from your, uh, your sight picture and it definitely takes away from the target for a bit. So I'm not sure if you can see down in here a bit at all. It's kind of probably gonna be hard, but, um, yeah, it's probably gonna be hard, but there is some buildup of carbon and stuff in here. And again, we're only down like, you know, maybe 200 rounds at most. So <laughs> I'm excited to see, kind of curious to see how this looks after, you know, a few hundred, maybe a, a, few, a couple thousand more rounds. So, all right, guys, I think that's about it. I don't think I have anything more to note right now. I will uh, touch on a few more things in the near future in a couple more videos, and there will be more range videos back at our, at our normal shooting location. So stay tuned for those. I'm going to get this comp reinstalled, uh, timed back up right, and then uh, probably put a little tiny bit of rock set on the screws and get her get her good so she's not going anywhere. Um, you'll see that it is a little dirty on the top. Again, not that many rounds through it, but I am you know getting getting some uh, carbon and stuff around the chamber area, um, which is to be expected. Uh, there's not really you know, there's not really anything on the on the surefire, so that's pretty good too. So I like that. There's a little bit as you can, yeah, there goes a little bit, but not a ton of buildup. But there's a little bit of uh, carbon on the, the lens there. So shot great. Just to summarize quick, big difference, big noticeable difference, I should say, from comp to no comp. Uh, I like the trigger, trigger's awesome, uh, less take up. I wish it was a little bit lighter though. And I am going to do a little bit more research into putting in that, that ghost three and a half pound connector. I just wanna make sure everything's going to jive properly before I do that. And I start messing with the trigger, which is an important mod to uh, be safe about. So I'm going to probably look into doing that. I like. I like the trigger. It's just a little heavy, heavier than I would like it to be for a gun like this, which potentially is in likely is going to be used to take some white tail. Everything's good. Everything else is awesome. Like I'm really happy with it. Like there were no issues whatsoever. Uh, everything that I was kind of hoping for was true. I'm glad I went with the comp uh, and everything's good. So yeah, two thumbs up. Couldn't be happy right now. So check back later. We'll have some more vids. Oh, a couple guys have asked what holster I'm using. Um, this is an inside the waistband holster from uh, Raven Concealment. It is the Vanguard 2. Um, bought this from Weapon Outfitters. They're kind of one of those holsters that they, they latch onto the light. Uh, they do cover the trigger, which is great, which is essential with the holster, obviously. And um, it's a nice inside the waistband option for an odd type gun like this, because this holster will pretty much fit anything with a Surefire X300U uh, AOB. So, um, 17 and 19 doesn't matter. Obviously the variance is going to be where your slide or barrel index is in relation to the, the holster and the, um, the surefire. So it uh, fits a bunch of different stuff. I like it. I don't plan on carrying this gun like inside the waistband or even 
like daily. It's again, it's more of a fun gun for protection. I think it's probably the better it is for hunting. But um, if I do need to take it out and uh, just want it on my person, I do have an option. So. Yeah. I also have one of those Shepherds too. Um, Gunfighter Beings, I believe where I bought that from. Uh, so it's kind of a chest that goes in here like this. You guys will see more of that later.